Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. To shine on me, that my soul knows very well. And free than my song knows very well. In mountains, oh, I'll stay by the power of your head and the old heart of the sun. Oh, 
Come on, somebody worship God. Jesus Christ, I think about your sacrifice when you became nervous. Poured out in many times. I've wondered at your gift of life. Tell him once again, once again, come on. Father, we think our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above you. Some power of love. Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above you. Some power of love.
by devils afflicted by devils if there is anybody here and you have never seen marriage in your family your family, you go back through and you don't see marriage I mean church tonight tonight something encompasses you Something gets a hold of you. Something gets a hold of you. Tonight, spiritual husbands, spiritual wives, they are judged in the name of Jesus. 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 They are judged. I want you to take a minute and tell God crazy things you believe this year before they are ends. Speak them like you're thinking. 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 There's a young lady who has been tormented by devils for so long and she has been having very bad headaches in the morning that sometimes even hit through her heart and she can feel them. Anybody of that nature Tonight, God arrests that spirit. God is delivering you. Bring her here. Bring her here. Power is getting on somebody right now. Power is getting on somebody right now. 
power is getting on somebody right now. She has been having a headache. And it has been hitting through her heart. Right now, the manifestation of the glory of God delivers that young woman for good. For good. For good. Bring her here. I feel there is somebody God is delivering right now. stretch your hands towards this girl and say tonight in the name of Jesus your judge devil your judge put them down your judge your judge now listen I'm going to say this in Luganda you understand what I'm saying you were here and you're in the line of inheriting things from your generations and grandfathers and great grandfathers. And there are people here, those things have been tormenting. They've affected your finances, they've affected your marital life, they've affected everything in your life. That kind of person on this ground tonight, in the name of Jesus, the power of God comes upon you. And delivers you from that nonsense. And I call it nonsense in the name of Jesus. I call it nonsense in the name of Jesus. I call it nonsense in the name of Jesus. Somebody say I have the life which is of God. I'm above demonic oppression. I'm above demonic affliction. I'm above demonic affliction. Say it. In the name of Jesus. Let me say something before you sit. Don't sit. Except if you're tired. I still have time. It's 8.30. When the Bible says, For whom he foreknew. <laughs> the Bible says, He also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. That means that if you know you're called by God, I want you to say to in your spirit that you are made to conform to yield to, it, to the nature of the image of the son. Anybody at my voice who believes that you are predestinated, I want to submit to your spirit and meditate on this thing. Give holy. Give yourself holy to it. The Bible says if you are predestinated, you are also called to be conformed to the very image and likeness of his son, Jesus. That means that if you're here and you know that you're called of God, God has intended that you look like Jesus. <laughs> Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. God has intended that you look like Jesus. Somebody say, I look like Jesus. I walk like Jesus. I talk like Jesus. I respond like Jesus. I act like Jesus. Everything in me, every fiber of my being, every meditation of my spirit is like Jesus. I do miracle signs and wonders. They follow me. Wherever I go, the power of God is present to heal, is present to change. Is present to uplift. Is present. Somebody said the power of God is present with me. The power of God is present with me. Say the power of God is present with me. Now listen. That you might be the firstborn among many. And the Bible says... Moreover, whom you he predestinated, he also called. Some of them called of God. And whom he called, he justified. <laughs> and whom he justified, 
He glorified. Tell your neighbor I'm a glorified being. I don't call upon the glory of God. No, I am the glory of God. Sometimes I see people who get in meetings and they start to invite the glory of God. <laughs> and I feel sorry for them. How can you invite what is already present? I am the embodiment of the glory of God. I am glorified. I am glorified. I am glorified. The glory of God is upon my life. The glory of God is upon my soul. The glory of God is in my body. The glory of God is in my ministry. The glory of God is in my family. The glory of God is upon me. Because I'm called. I'm called by God. I know who I am. I know who I am. Listen. The Bible says that he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. God could not allow that joining without a glorification. I mean, He could not allow that union of spirits with Him if you are not glorified. God is not united to a weak entity. He's not united to a weak body. He's not united to a weak individual. His spirit... Jesus said in his own very words, he says, and my glory I have given unto them. The glory. Some of you say, ah, I don't deserve the glory of God. No, 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 no. You're sick. Be delivered from that spirit. Jesus said, and the glory which thou gave me, he says, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one, that we may be. He and the There is no unity of the spirit if the human spirit is not elevated to the glory of the Son. Oh! I carry the glory which is of Christ. Somebody say, I carry the glory which is of Jesus Christ. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. That's why this world can't survive you. Where have you seen it where people stand like, eh. Somebody say, I carry the glory which is of God. The glory of the Son I have partaken in my spirit. That means anything Jesus can do you can do anything Jesus can do now the Bible says that for this reason was the son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil I, I was created to destroy the devil I was, I was made to heal the sick I was made to deal with poverty I was made to cast disease somebody say I was made to deal with corruption. I was made to change this world. That is what is upon my spirit. The Bible says that they turned the image of the incorruptible God into a corruptible thing. Like the graven images they worshipped. That's why God gave them over. They took him small. They took him for granted. They didn't take him serious. When the Bible says that all that is known of him is manifest in you, do you realize he's not promising you? It's an unaffirmed confirmation or a confirmed affirmation. Hallelujah. Everything that is known of God be it known on you in the name of Jesus. Everything that they know Jesus to do do one more in the name of Jesus. Do one more in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you have that life. This is the record. It is written in heaven and earth and I believe it in my spirit. That I have eternal life. That I have eternal life. That I have eternal life. 
that I have eternal life. A young lady called me. I think she was somewhere and then thieves robbed her money. They robbed, they robbed her money. Do you, you understand? They robbed her money. They took her money. Thieves. They took her money. So she called me and told me, Apostle, they stole my money. And I told her, may you find it where you want, you want it. You want to find it. <laughs> I didn't say let them catch the thieves. May you find it where you want to find it. She called me during the week and told me a random person deposited the exact amount of money on her account, bank account. She went to the bank and said, is there an error? Is there a misposting? And I said, no. Somebody came and posted the exact amount of money. Tell somebody we have the life which is of God. Blame the guy who goes in a fish and tells it to cough money. I am glorified. So, when you read the Bible, and the Bible says, and as we behold, like in the mirror, the glory of God. You look at yourself. He says, and as you understand who you are in the Bible. As you understand who uh, as you understand who you are, you are the glory of the Lord. Ye, ye apostle, what have you said? No, listen. Jesus and his glory was inseparable. Jesus didn't give us glory, he gave us his glory. The atmosphere that walked on him, he released it on your spirit. Can somebody take this? Can somebody really take this? That is why your meditations have to change. Stop meditating. Stop meditating from corruption. Stop meditating from limitation. Stop meditating from lack. Hallelujah. He said, greater is he which is in you than he that, which, that, that is in the world. Hallelujah. He says, and as we behold the glory which is of God, we are translated, we are transformed into the very image, that ever increasing splendor from one degree of, in other words, if you want to increase what is upon you, understand who you are in God. I said, if you want to increase what is upon your life, Understand who you are in God. Can I share something a bit crazy? Do I have a few minutes with you? An hour, sir. <laughs> Many of us are married. What must say to When the Bible says that in the last days knowledge shall be increased. When the Bible says that in the last days knowledge shall be increased in the time of the end. He knew that there was a necessary understanding of the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ to open up things that were hid. You see, many people don't understand that there was a time, and, and I never want to forget this, there was a time in the history of the world where God saw some things and they looked too beautiful for the men of that time. And then he hid them for you. <laughs> do you know like do you know like parents keep for their children? They eat something and then it's so nice and they say ah, let me. the Bible says there are certain things that were hid for your glorification. I wish you understand what I'm saying. When he released things and, and the Daniels did miracles, he saw your life and he said, uh-uh, there's something Daniel hasn't accessed. He covered it. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. The life has made access to floods. 
They blinded armies and led them to the hands of kings. They gave directions to the kings, the enemies of Israel. They waxed valiant in war. They tore mouths of lions. And God saw all of these things and said, I that. There is something else. Sealed for your glorification. The Bible speaks of the things that are hid before the foundation of the world. That God will glorify you through those things. The days have come when the things we are reading in the Bible are not going to be miracles in our lives. Because they are going to be day to day things. And the, 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 the definition of miracles in our days is going to change. Because there were things that were hid for your glorification. Somebody said there are things that were hidden for my glorification. I wish they could get me that scripture. Thank you. Somebody said we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the foundation of the world and to our glory. Oh. There are things Jeremiah couldn't see because they were supposed to be kept for you. There were things Ezekiel could not see because they were supposed to be kept for you. There were things Isaiah couldn't see because they were kept for you. That is why I know we are, as the knowledge increases in our times, men are going to start asking God, send us back. Send us back in that time. We are living in one of the most beautiful times of the history of the world. I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When I speak about that, I'm not talking about the money you will amass. That is nothing. Solomon had money too. I'm not talking about the jobs you will get. Solomon had jobs too. I'm talking about the beautiful things God will reveal to you. The Bible says that I will show you great and unsearchable things. There are things that are beyond human scrutiny things no man can search out. But the God of grace is ready to distribute on your spirit. Because he knew the church cannot go to the next level without revelation. And definitely the revelation in our time supersedes the revelation of the times that we've seen on the earth before. How many of you believe it? God has changed the way he speaks. Are you hearing me? God has changed the way he speaks. I don't know why people take too long to understand that all you ever needed was a certain light to light your spirit through the knowledge of the gospel. And everything you need in this world will be released. Everything, even the anointing with which we function, even the, the anointing with which we function to heal the sick comes through that knowledge. It comes through that knowledge. It comes through that knowledge. That's why I said, Gone are the days when men say, God was here and I knew not. We are in a generation that knows even the existence of God, even as He is. If He sent forth the word to Israel, to Jacob, and He did Israel, that's why Abraham is telling him, I have no seed, for I have no heir. If you read the scriptures, you realize Abraham required seed as well as Sarah. See, they required a certain message. We have entered a time in history where the revelation of the person of Jesus goes beyond the men that have walked before us. Babes are going to speak forth the proclamation of the things of God. I have lived in times by the Spirit, but I have not experienced 
the feeling of hunger and thirst for the word of God in this generation like the generations before now somebody say what do you mean by you've lived in time I have walked life eternal you might not believe or even understand where I'm coming from because many of you are limited by your existence in the flesh I want to tell you that your spirits are eternal even if right now you want to walk back 3,000 years, 2,000 years, there is the grace of God to take you there. There is an ability of the Spirit to take you there. Because the God in you is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that same God has ordained all things pure and open before us. If any man's eyes will open, you realize that the grace of God right now on the face of the earth has caused God to pour out and open the canopy of the spirit like never before. And he tells his sons and daughters, access and come whichever you wish. Drink as much. Don't only walk in the future. Walk, inquire of the ancient past. He says, inquire of the ancient past. Inquire. Inquire of the way. In art, if you want to know the things that have gone back, that pertain to the life of the gospel, those things are so easy to access. Because the eternal God is present like he was in the past and in the future. And he's inside you, ready to reveal. But right now we are living in a time like has never happened in the history of the world before. Where God is causing men to hunger for the word of God because knowledge is being released to equal measure. We are closer to the end of the world than we have ever been before. I can tell you Jesus, you see many people are so conscious of what the devil is doing outside. And within is many divisions and indifferences in the body of Christ. The Pentecostal tongue speaking believers are the most divided group on the face of the earth. But even then, the Lord of Sabbath has preserved himself a, a, a remnant. And the Bible says they have been elected by grace. It's not according to works. No. It's according to grace. Now in Hebrews, he says something. He says that there are men which were within the camp. And many men conform to the standards of this world. Because the camp provided for the standards of this world. Any man that walked out of the camp started to look like they were not part of them. Persecution arose. Strivings and endings arose within the camp. Against men who started to look like they were outside the camp. Hallelujah. Why? Jesus had left the camp long ago. Do you understand what I'm saying? When the Lord spoke to me that you're going to preach the grace message, He told me, Apostle Grace, you're going to be fought. My son, you're going to be persecuted. Men will say everything on your life. But He told me, but never forget, there's a difference between being in the camp where I'm not and being with the in outside the camp with me. And it's as though we are living in a time where men are without the camp, but they are with God. Why? Because the camp has become predictable. We are settling for easy things. You find a Christian who has been born again for so many years, but they are believing for so little, so small. They want God to use them, but the way they're asking God to use them is like they have read before. God wants to use you beyond what you've read. He says, I has not seen, he has not heard, and has not entered the hearts of men that which he has prepared for them that love him. Every time on Thursday, when I stand and I see thousands come to listen to the gospel, I'm always reminded, you're not alone outside the camp. There are people who feel the way you feel. And I ask God, why do men prefer within the camp? 
Because within the camp does not hold them accountable to how much is given them. They carry not the responsibility of what is given. The Bible tells us that to whom much is given, much is required. Every time knowledge is increased in a generation, it's as though every man has to understand that comes with a certain responsibility. We are more responsible now than we were ever before. The church now of Christ is more responsible than it has ever been in the history of the world. We have to stop asking for small things. We have to stop asking for things money can buy. We have to stop being petty in the things of the Spirit. Because necessity is laid on us. God is no longer asking us. No. It is a must. Some of us, if we stopped preaching, we would die. Why? Because the responsibility that is on our spirit, the, 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 the agitations our spirits will have to carry, the burdens that would override our souls because we stopped preaching, were enough to kill us even if disease had not come. Paul was filled with too much that he got to the level and told God, what to me if I preach not the gospel? God is raising people who are entering a time where they'll say, what unto me if I don't change Uganda? What unto me if this world does not change? I'll be damned if I die a normal man. I cannot die. A normal man. Why? I am glorified. A woman came with a clutch with a broken leg. We were worshipping, she was healed. We didn't need to exert a lot of pressure on it. No. We are the glory of God. She came where glory was. She came where glory was. How couldn't things change? Do you think you can come in this kind of atmosphere and your life remains as even if you want to, your life cannot remain the same again. It cannot. It cannot. Why? Because God let me say this. There was a time I got a couple of years ago where God started to pour out more than I was ready to, to release. Do you understand what I'm saying? Of course, there's an equal balance of if you're given, then release too. But I'd gotten to a level where much was given. But I didn't have the ability to release it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because for me, God would speak to me when I'm reading the Bible. As I'm going to bed, something falls in my spirit. In the night when I'm on my bed, revelation is in my spirit. In the morning when I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, revelation is hitting my spirit. It, for me, it has it became so regular that that was the first time I understood what it means to be free. Being free is when God imprints a grace on your spirit to access the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ anytime. 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 The challenge is that we have involved ourselves so much in the petty things of, the, of this life that many people don't understand the high calling with which we were called. We are living in a time where most souls are going to... Like the book of Acts says, the church is going to be feared. We are entering a time where men will look at us and we shall look as a threat. There was a time they looked at us and we were nothing. That is why it is eternal life. To know the one true God and His only Son, Jesus. As the words of God increase on your life, the anointing increases. The anointing increases. Why? Because you speak Rema. Let me explain something about Rema. Many people speak 
human reasoning. They, they, they call it Rema. It's not. Let me explain something about Rema. Something about Rema. Rema. That timely word of God. Hmm? Can I say something on it? Let me explain what Rema is. Rema is not what comes out of your spirit immediately and you take advantage of because a door has been opened before you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Say, pastors, Rema is not what you read and it hits you at 10 a.m. And then a door is opened for you. And then you think, this is what people need. Let me explain something. Let me tell you why we have the biggest ministry on the face of the earth. You don't need to believe me. I believe myself so much because I know who told me. I want you to understand why in the future we are going very far. In the book of Genesis, when men got a language and God realized that these people being one language, nothing they do will restrain them. Nothing. Nothing they, they imagine to do will be held from them. Nothing. Nothing. The Bible says nothing will be restrained from them which they imagine. Even Satan couldn't. Even God couldn't. Some people don't see that. God could not stop them. The moment they imagined, they had access. The moment they imagined, they had access. The moment they imagined, they had access. Why? Because there were one language and one speech. God went and put confusion on them because they were building something without Him. Are you hearing me? In the New Testament, the Bible says they were confounded. The Bible uses the word, the Lord went down and confounded them. Some of you have read it. The Lord went down and confounded them. He confounded you have stuck on one verse. Can you go to the next verse? Oh, third or fourth. Praise the Lord Jesus. In the book of Acts, eh? in the book of Acts, similar situation. This time round, tongues were spoken. And the Bible says, and men outside were confounded, were confused. The only difference is that in Genesis, men were confounded away from God because they did not acknowledge God in their increase and multiplication, in their growth. Praise God. In Acts, the Bible says, when this was raised abroad, the multitudes came together and were confounded because every man, listen, every man had them speak in his own language. Every man had them speak in his own language. But let's go a bit deeper. And the next verse says, and they were all amazed and marveled. Listen to what they say. To one another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How, listen, here we, every man, every man, in our own tongue, wherein we were born. Meaning, the Christian had every man speaking his language. The Syrian had every man speaking his language. The, the, every tribe, listen. Yet they were speaking in unknown tongues. But when they spoke in unknown tongues, every man had them speaking his language. It's likened to a time where you stand in front and start speaking in tongues. And the Englishman understands you. The Muchika understands you. The Itasot understands you. The German understands you. The French understands you. The Dutch understands you. The Portuguese understands you. The Spanish understands you. Because even if what is coming out of you is unknown, when it hits the ears of men, Every man here is just speaking his language. That day, 
every man who had it got born again. How does a man pastor millions of people? Simple. By speaking in a language, every man understands. The Lord has given me the tongue of the land to know how to speak a word to him that is wearing season. That means he gives you a word that even if two million people are listening, everyone picks something for their season. That is the beginning of Rema. It is Rema if in one language you can make sense to every man in his own season and you speak it the way he has to receive it. Now some of you might not be preachers but God will give you multi-million dollar ideas that every tribe and tongue will relate with. He will give you concepts that every tribe and tongue will understand. God is giving you something. Uber is in Uganda. Uber is in France. Uber is in Germany. It is an application, but it cuts across every language. That is where we are going as a church. The language of the spirit goes beyond human language. Men are drawn when we lift Christ. He says, if you raise me up, I'll draw my men to myself. How do we raise him? By speaking in the language of the spirit. He says, these things we speak not in the wisdom of man, but in the wisdom which is of the Holy Spirit. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Give me the amplified of that. He says, which things also we are setting these truths forth in what's not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit. Combining, listen, and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Ghost. I have something on me. I was in Israel one time. And we sat in a table to share. Not far. The government had invited a few evangelical preachers. And I went with a number of evangelicals. And some of them were African. There was this man who spoke Portuguese and his mother tongue. But every time I spoke, he always said, I understand what he's saying. Because God is giving us a language that no government can ignore. That cuts through every institution. The world is going to become too small that we are not going to have language barrier. Because the New Testament is confounding men to God. That means God is going to work in you so mighty that men are going to be confused until they believe Him. Did you hear what I just said? We dream of crusades of 40, 50,000. In Soroti, we are standing before 30, 50,000 people. 30,000. How? In your spirit, you tell yourself, I have a language that speaks to every man listening to me. That is how you're going to be successful engineers. Because human beings are limited. You're not limited. Open your eyes and see. That is why knowledge is coming. Knowledge is coming to learn men to give you the house to provide answers in the seasons of men. That's Rema. That's Rema. God 
is pouring out rhema in our days than ever before. And I want to finish this way. You might never be a preacher like me. But may you one time enter an office and speak a language the MD understands. The man who is supposed to give you a contract understands. The man who is supposed to work for you understands. The man who is meant to bless you understands. May you enter a grace where you speak a language of the Spirit in the simplicity of the words that you'll speak. And men will understand you. That is why I told men we have a message for the whole world, Pastor Zach. It's how we know how. It's how we know how to do it. For some, they might not even understand what I've said. But by the language of the Spirit, the impartation that comes on their souls will explain. Start to receive it right now. Holy Spirit. The glory of God is here. Because we are here and you are in us. Knowledge increases. As well as the responsibility. But we are ready. Can you raise your hands and start to receive this thing? I feel it's too heavy. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Touch by the Holy Ghost. Somebody start to speak in tongues and say, I receive it tonight. Say, I receive it tonight. I receive it tonight. Just speak in tongues for two minutes. I'm an answer to prayer. I'm an answer to prayer. I'm an answer to prayer. I feel something so heavy. Something so heavy. Some of you are receiving something for the world. The, the influence on your soul, the influence of your spirit goes beyond the borders of Uganda goes beyond the borders of Africa. You're going to enter businesses that are multinational. Careers that are multinational. In the name of Jesus. Ministries that are international. You'll have ministries in Germany, Australia, Russia, mainland China, why? Because you speak the language. They understand. I want you to give the Lord a man of praise. Clap for Jesus like something has happened in your life. No, 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 you're not clapping. Clap for Jesus. Like something has happened in your life. Listen. It's a bit dark. And there are people slain within you. We want those people in the light. Before I finish... Wow. 
Before I finish, I want to thank you for having faith. If it wasn't for faith, this rain was going to disrupt the meeting. But it has not. <laughs> Laugh. When the rain began to fall, when it threatened to fall, I did something many of you should be doing. When things start to become funny, worship and praise God. Because when it seems like it is bad, it's when the power is available. We just needed to get our attention off it. Hallelujah. And I did it deliberately for some of you. That when you go through a situation that is hard, dance for God. Dance for God. Sing for Him. Before you know it. Victory is yours. Unless God has spoken, it won't rain on us. Tell your neighbor, unless God has spoken, rain is not our portion. Somebody say, I'm glorified. If you're healed, I want you to come here and give a testimony because I felt many people were being healed while we were preaching. Praise God. Start to carry those people here. Number two, if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Wow. Elizabeth and your friend there is something around there receive it I see it, I feel it you know you can feel when something is around something when the anointing is around somewhere you can feel it wow are you feeling the anointing of the Holy Spirit if you want to be born again please come Praise is true. Oh. Ask your immediate neighbor if they are not born again, send them here. Who is carrying somebody next week? Should we be outside or inside? No, no, answer me. Should we be outside or inside? <laughs> Glory! Ask your immediate neighbor if they're not born again, send them here. Carry somebody next Thursday. Oh, you alone is a highest praise. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Wow. Two minutes to go. Worship and you're here, put up your hands. Anybody, even if you're not in the choir, I feel something special is falling. I see the spirit, the spirit of worship. And I see God elevate somebody. Holy Spirit, touch them. 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 The lamb will walk in your worship. The blind will see in your worship. The sick will be healed as you worship. 
the unchangeable will change as you worship. Wow. The spirit of a worshiper is here. Wow. Wow. The cripple will walk out of wheelchairs as you worship God. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.